partners that I'm now going to space with Parkinson's is completely magical. Virgin Galactic is breaking down barriers for space travel and scientific research. From the regulatory side to the engineering side, it's amazing to see all of these pieces come together. The new space age means diversity, imagination, and adventure all will have a home in space. We've built a space line, and now it's time to go. This is revolutionary. My name is Anastasia Mears. My name is John Goodwin. Keisha Shaha. I'm the first person from Antigua to go to space. For me to go into space is hopefully inspirational to all people. It really does just connect everyone. This is for all of us. Space for all opportunity. We all need to get out of our comfort zone, try new things, to believe in ourselves. These are pre-space tiers. This is a uh, standard issue tiers, totally required to go into space. Welcome everyone and prepare yourself. There will definitely be pre-space tiers. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this momentous day as we bring you coverage of our first private astronaut commercial space flight, Galactic 2. I'm Sarisha Banla. I run research operations and government affairs here at Virgin Galactic, and I had the privilege of becoming astronaut 004 on our Unity 22 test flight. We're coming to you live from our home at Spaceport America, set in the beautiful state of New Mexico here in the US. Days like today don't come around all too often. They're special days that mark moments where boundaries are broken and what we thought to be impossible is redefined. As you saw in the intro, the crew aboard our first private astronaut flight today are unique. They're history makers. They're not only achieving their own dreams, but they're also inspiring the entire world. On board, we have the first Olympian to go to space, the first astronauts from Antigua and Barbuda, the first mother-daughter duo to fly to space, and the youngest astronaut in history. And also one of my personal favorites, this is the most women in a, ever in a single space flight, and our, our, our mission is also majority female, which is huge given that less than 100 women have gone to space total in our history. The list goes on for this incredible crew, and I can't wait for you to get them to know them more on this show. But first, let me introduce you to my co-host, our Mission Insights Specialist, Jonathan Ritchie. For those of you who have joined us before, you know that our Mission Insights Specialist will give you live play-by-play -play updates direct from Mission Control. So thanks for joining us again, JR. Thanks, Sarisha. What a pleasure it is to be in the studio with you today. I can't, can't wait to get into this flight and share it with all of our viewers across the world. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here in the studio. And Thank you. Can you tap into that special power of yours and give us an update on our crew and our vehicles? <laughs> yes, I can. So. Um, as you can see, we're, the vehicles are already airborne. We have uh, earlier this morning observed a perfect takeoff from our runway here at Spaceport America with Eve, the mothership, piloted by astronauts Nicola Pacelli and Mike Masucci. Mothership Eve it has uh, completed the climb to launch altitude, which for today's flight is 44 and a half thousand feet. But in addition to that launch altitude, there's also a designated launch point within the airspace. Everything is looking fantastic. As I said, we're already at altitude. We're at 46,000 feet right now, and just a beautiful view you get from up there. I imagine our crew are taking it in, and they're preparing themselves as we get closer and closer to that big moment. Amazing. I, just, I can feel the anticipation, and I'm not even on board. <laughs> Now, the individuals today on board bring with them a wealth of diverse motivation and wonderful stories that make them one of the most extraordinary crews to ever fly to space. And when I say it out loud, I, I really just can't help but feel immense pride. It's always been Virgin Galactic's core mission to broaden access to space, giving more people from all corners of the globe more opportunities to experience the wonder and awe of space travel. And today really feels like the start of something very special. Now, on board first, we have John Goodwin, an Olympian and one of the first Virgin Galactic ticket holders. He's waited 18 years for this. John is joined by Keisha Shahoff and Anastasia Myers, a Caribbean mother-daughter duo who won their seats in a draw that raised funds for nonprofit Space for Humanity. These three remarkable individuals show that the barriers that once existed to becoming an astronaut are being broken down. Now, to date, 
fewer than 700 people have traveled to space. And not only that, but the rich diversity of humankind is still really truly to be represented. And we're here to change that, beginning with an 800 strong community of future astronauts that come from astonishing 60 different nations across the globe. And some of them will be the first of their nation to experience space. And that is certainly true of today. And I know we have a lot of future astronauts joining us from around the globe here on our live stream. So a huge shout out to all of our future astronauts in that incredible community. You know, Sarisha, that's, that's what I really love about Virgin Galactic. We're allowing people that chance to realize the dream of going to space, a dream that I hope to realize myself one day. I know you'll get to space one day, JR. I'm excited. <laughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, Keisha and Anna will be the first ever Antiguan astronauts. Now, historical occasions like this bring communities together. The whole island is celebrating this milestone, including guest Prime Minister Gaston Brown and Virgin's founder, Sir Richard Branson. And we're going to go live to Antigua, where our very own astronaut 006, Christopher Huey, is at the celebration. Chewy, what's it like over there? All right, it looks like we have a few technical difficulties, so we'll try to check in a little bit later. But uh, I saw some of the celebration, honestly, a bit earlier, and it looked amazing. There was yes, a, a huge crowd there supporting Anna and Keisha. We saw Chewy give a presentation about the flight to the crowd. It just looked like all of them were having an incredible time. So we'll try to check in a little bit later. Now, we know that space has this amazing ability to bring people together, and that was on full display in Antigua, but there's also a lot of other <laughs> parties going on as well. Um, and we'll go in and check on those a bit later. So, oh, I'm just, uh, it's just couldn't be more excited. <laughs> now, yeah. what looks like, uh, let's go and check in on the people on board. Their stories are so inspiring and I can't wait to get, uh, to go into their stories and have our entire audience join them on their journeys. Now. John Goodwin, let's start with Astronaut 11, an Olympian and one of our first ticket holders. Let's take a look at John's story. I have been waiting a quarter of my life on this earth to go into space. I'm 80 now. The fact that I'm now going to be doing this is completely magical. I watched the landing on the moon with great interest in 1969, and it's incredible to think that I'm here. John is such an interesting man. He is one of the most incredible people I've ever met. He's such a daredevil. This guy lives. I collected in the Olympic Games in 1972. I organized an expedition of 14 people. The record still stands today. I seem to attract myself to these sort of things. When I got diagnosed with Parkinson's, I thought, well, that's it. They're not going to accept me. Going to space despite the Parkinson's. This attitude of space for all is a wonderful thing. Hearing his story makes me realize I'm going to be sharing this mission with such an amazing human. To space. This opportunity is completely unreal. For me to go into space and defy Parkinson's is hopefully inspirational to all people. Now, John Goodwin's community in Stoke, England are watching together. And in New York City, friends are gathered at the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research to watch as well. He's got a huge community supporting him, and he'll only be the second person diagnosed with Parkinson's to fly to space. Next up, we have Keisha Shahoff, astronaut 12. Keisha won two seats through a philanthropic fundraising sweepstakes benefiting Space for Humanity, a nonprofit organization. Their mission to send more diverse human to space and change perspectives resonated with Keisha and encouraged her to enter. Let's take a look at Keisha's journey. In my dreams, I'm always flying. Three, two, one, release, release, release. I've lived all my life by the water, but I feel more connected in the air. 
My first interest in space really started when I was two years old, just looking up in the skies. How can I become an astronaut? Being in the Caribbean, I didn't see how that was possible. So slowly I started letting that go, but the universe was calling me. So you would be the first astronaut from Antigua, of course. Making history. You're making yeah. history. It's a very inclusive mission. My lifestyle is very much grounded. The same way that I live is how I educate and I help others in my coaching program. I hope to inspire people in this region to get beyond their limitations. When I was asked the question, I want two seats, who's coming with me? Anna looked over at me and she says, Mom, if anyone is going with you to space, it's going to be me. I feel like to be successful in this life, you have to be able to bend and stretch yourself. It's an adventure of humility and humanity. How can we come together to make this realistic for everyone? This is our mission. This is for all of us. Okay, Keisha's reaction to being told she's going to space just embodied an incredible amount of excitement. And to make Keisha's experience even more remarkable, she chose her youngest daughter, Anastasia Myers, astronaut 13, a college philosophy and physics student, to be her companion. Let's get to know Anna. Every time I look at the stars, it almost feels like I have a place in the universe. It reminds me that like everything happens for a reason. I've always been interested in any sort of science. I think it was in about grade three or grade four, we started learning about astronomy. That made me so deeply interested in finding out what else is out there. I'm studying philosophy and physics in University of Aberdeen in Scotland. I want to be an astrobiologist. That thought seemed like it was so almost impossible. I do believe if she puts her mind on whatever it is she wants, I know she will achieve it. Hi, Anna. You and your mother are going to space. Anna, we won! I know I am very young. There's so many other people like me wanting to do something involving space and don't think that they actually have the opportunity to do that. Virgin Galactic's mission is to expand this to civilians. Ideas are very powerful. We all need to get out of our comfort zone to try new things, to believe in ourselves. I mean, when I said this crew is incredible, <laughs> might have been an understatement. They're absolutely extraordinary. Yes, they are. Now, I've heard that we have our feedback from Antigua, so let's check in with Chewy on the celebrations. and the energy is absolutely off the charts. Yeah. Now, we're coming right off the heels of Carnival, and we are gathered here for an amazing watch party where the people are gonna go crazy! <laughs> Space has this amazing ability to bring people together, and we've got waving flags, we've got music, we've got dancing, maybe a little rum, I don't know, but everyone here is really excited for Keisha and Anna. Back to you in the studio, Sarisha. Amazing. I can feel the celebration. It's amazing. I can feel the energy. It's incredible. Now, going to our pilots who are going to be taking our dynamic crew to space, I want to introduce our commander of Unity, astronaut CJ Sturkow, a retired Marine test pilot and former NASA astronaut. Sturkow is a veteran of four space shuttle missions and three Virgin Galactic Unity missions. He's the first person to launch the space from three different states. Piloting Unity today is Kelly Latimer, who has logged more than 6,700 hours in her 32-year flying career. Kelly also operates as our Senior Director of Flight Test. This will be Kelly's first space flight, and she'll become one of only a handful of women to pilot a commercial spacecraft. 
And joining the crew in the cabin is my fellow Unity 22 crewmate, Beth Moses. Beth is our chief astronaut instructor overseeing all the training and preparation of the Galactic 2 crew. Beth is flying with the crew to continue to evaluate the spaceflight experience for our future astronauts. Now, speaking of our future astronauts, JR, how are we looking? Well, we are about three, uh, four and a half minutes out from release. That's uh, an estimate based on our expected time of arrival at the release point, and that gets uh, closer and closer to being accurate as we get closer and closer to that release point. So at this point, four and a half minutes out, that's a fairly accurate estimate. All right, you know, space flight is not just a trip to space. I know we're following our crew to their release altitude, but it's an experience that starts well before the rocket lights. And this crew has an amazing amount of supporters behind them. Their friends, families, and communities around the world, they're inspiring. Let's take a look of some special messages sent in for this crew. Former NASA astronaut Ron Garen here. I can't wait for you to hear. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Keisha and Anastasia, good luck on your space trip. You truly are an inspiration. My heartfelt wishes for a safe and a meaningful space flight. Remember that you carry with you the dreams of so many others as you carry us all closer to the stars. Anastasia, now you are representing the University of Aberdeen in space. I'm just sending a message to all the students and the community that our dreams can come true. Congratulations to my cousin Keisha. I'm so happy you put the energy out there and Virgin Galactic, you caught it. We knew you were born to fly. You're gonna be inspiring a whole generation of young Antiguan and Barbudans. Hi, Mom, Keisha, I miss you a lot. And I'm happy your dream came true. Good luck to the entire crew and especially Anna. We're so happy for you. We're supporting you and we're all here for you. This is just a huge historic moment. I'll be watching from here in Australia. Here in the UK. From Antigua. From Iceland. From Edinburgh. Godspeed. Yeah. Bring me back a Mars bar. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as astronaut Ron Guerin said uh, at this point, we're getting close to our release, release, release point. So I'll turn it over to our Mission Insight Specialist, Jonathan Ritchie, to take us through some of those final checks and talk us through what happens after release as well. Thank you, Sarisha. So at this point, uh, the pilots are ensuring that the spaceship is in its launch configuration. You know, after I just said we're uh, that, that time estimate's pretty, pretty accurate at this point. Well, we went and adjusted it. So we're about three and a half minutes out right now and currently conducting our L minus four checks. That's a series of checks that we accomplish at designated points on our uh, flight profile to ensure that the spaceship is go for launch. This is also when Spaceship Unity will isolate its air supply from EVE and prime the rocket motor by opening the backup oxidizer valve. Once these actions are complete, the pilots will seek clearance for release from the MCC, that's shorthand for the Mission Control Center. The MCC team consists of experts across various departments and disciplines within the company, and they're verifying these checks with our crew every step of the way. For me, this is where I really start to feel the anticipation building and get excited. I can only imagine what it'd be like to be on board right now. Ah. It's, so, this is really the, air, the time when the anticipation builds. <laughs> All you're thinking about is that release point and getting into that boost and honestly getting into space. It's gonna just, yes. it's so exciting. And I just heard the L minus four checks are uh, complete. So as you, as you just mentioned that release point, the, right after that, the crew lights the rocket motor and Unity's trajectory to space starts in that uh, horizontal release position before turning towards space, a maneuver that we refer to as the gamma turn. And then the rest of the rocket motor burn occurs in the vertical. We're now two minutes out from release. The rocket motor boost was one of my favorite parts of the flight. Seeing the Earth drop away and seeing space come into view is just absolutely exciting. And of course, our vehicle oh. gives <laughs> our customers the best view of Earth with the amount of windows we have. Yes, so we, have, we are go for release on time. That's about a minute 40 from now. As you mentioned, that view from Earth, when, when the rocket motor burn is completed, the uh, pilots will command the ship to feather. That's rotating the tail and the aft section of the wing up to about 60 degrees. And that starts a backflip maneuver for our spaceship. And it orients the, the vehicle such that all of those windows overhead 
are providing just a fantastic view for everyone on board to be able to look down at the Earth below. All right, so we're about a minute 10 away from release at this point, one minute. And I can see the crowds in Antigua, and they're <laughs> excited. I can see the crowds here at Space Porn America getting ready to cheer our crew on on their ascent to space. So the last set of checks that will be done, we refer to as the L minus 30, or 30 seconds to release. And that's when the Spaceship Unity pilots ready and arm the launch pylon. And that allows, once we get to the designated point in our flight profile for the mothership pilots, to engage the release and set Unity free. We're now 30 seconds away from release. The very last preparation that the pilots in Spaceship do before release is they push that control stick all the way forward, ensuring that we have a perfect separation. We're 15 seconds. 10. 9. Five, three, two, one, release, release, release. Ignition, good control. There's Mach 1. The pilots have started trimming for that turn towards space. Trim is now set. There is max Q. That's the point of maximum pressure exerted on the vehicle by the atmosphere. Those on board are experiencing about three Gs right now and traveling over a thousand miles an hour. That's incredible. I can imagine they're having quite a great time. We're at Mach 2. We're in the vertical headed towards space. This is the part where they're seeing Earth move away and seeing space come into view and seeing that they're going to space and just, it is an incredible feeling. The so we've got about Mach 2.8, Mach 3 approximately, and rocket motor cutoff. Amazing, the crowds here are just <laughs> absolutely going wild. I can't imagine what's happening in Antigua with them cheering them on. That's Incredible. Awesome. Go Keisha, go Anna, <laughs> go John. So everybody on board has been cleared to unstrap and enjoy that zero G experience. The pilots have unlocked the feather. That's the preparation so that they can raise the feather here momentarily. They're engaging the RCS as well. The feather is now starting to move on its way up. Everyone's up out of their seats just Oh, it's incredible. They're the all, I know, they're, it's, in, it's amazing. They're all going to the window and taking in this just absolutely incredible view of Earth, the planet where all of their experiences are held, everything they've ever known is That's wonderful. down below. The feather is all the way up. We have a predicted apogee of about 289,000 feet. That is amazing. Our crew looks like they're having an absolutely incredible time and they are officially astronauts. Welcome to space. Woo. Congratulations <laughs> to John, to Keisha, to Anna on becoming astronauts today. And a special congratulations to our Unity pilot, Kelly, for her first space flight. And welcome back to space, CJ and Beth. And the vehicle is oriented in that, that back flipper, that upside down maneuver from our perspective. Uh, and you can see them just enjoying that view of the Earth below. Oh, they, man, it's just incredible. <laughs> I, I can see that they just can't take their eyes away. And it's, you know, it's hard for us to describe. We can obviously see they're having just an incredible time in space taking in the views, but it's an experience. It's the silence. It's the views. It's yes. seeing our brilliant planet against the matte black of space. I can't imagine I can't imagine what, I mean, I, could, I can't imagine what they're going through right now, and I can't wait to hear about it. Yeah, well, we just achieved our apogee at 290,000 feet. That's 88 and a half kilometers. Amazing. And apogee is actually a very unique part of our experience. It's when our vehicle begins that descent back down to Earth, and everything stands still. It's just, and we take a moment in the cabin, silent, and looking out as a crew, and it's, 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 an, it's, it's an experience I can only describe with these words, but one to be felt, really. Yes, so the pilots have initiated the uh, uh, motion to return the vehicle around, complete that backflip all the mm -hmm. way around, and orient us for the uh, re-entry. <clears throat> 
they've just made the return to seat call. They do that before we get to about 0.1 Gs. The pilots tell those, the passengers when to return to their seats, and then it's something that our training team has made very natural and intuitive, Absolute, even though yeah. you're in that reduced G environment. Yeah, absolutely. During the uh, days up leading to training, it's something that all of our crew practice. It, our um, cabin is very purposefully designed yes. to allow for our crew to get back into their seats. And even on re-entry, the, the amount of Gs that you feel but um, mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's designed that anyone can do it, as we've and seen today. And the views are going to be amazing on the way down, too. So when we talk about space travel right with a, the boost everybody recognizes that as as exciting and thrilling but the reentry is actually quite thrilling as well and we have shock waves that uh stand, form over the top of the uh of the vehicle we right now they're experiencing the max g on reentry of about 3.5 um, we're supersonic so if you're outside here at the spaceport america you should hear a double sonic boom as space uh spaceship once again breaks the sound barrier on reentry we're now, we just passed subsonic. Amazing. And the crowds, again, are just cheering on our entire crew. They're going to be able to see the vehicle um, as it comes down to land. And our crew here are also uh, going to be um, just, again, they're going to be able to see Spaceport America. They're going to be able to see their, you know, see, just see that their family and their friends are yes. there cheering them on as they come back and return to Spaceport America. So we've passed below 60,000 feet. Uh, once we get to about 53 to 55,000 feet, we'll command the feather down. That'll um, result in the nose of the spaceship dropping. And then once the feather is down and locked, it, which it's now moving, the crew will pull back on the stick and make a gentle return to uh, level flight. I remember during the reentry, I just could not, again, I just could not stop looking <laughs> out the window. The, the landscape of New Mexico is just very indicative of this planet. It's beautiful and it's that, um, it's really just amplifies going to space, looking down on just the beautiful planet you've just left. And the feather is now down and locked. So the pilots are starting that uh, gentle pull back to straight and level flight. It's, spaceship is now a glider. So it's all about balancing that potential and kinetic energy. If they want to go faster, they push the nose uh, down. And if they want to go slower, they pull back and bring the nose up. It's absolutely incredible. G2 is a flight for the history books. The crew on board are on the leading edge of broadening space access and are taking the first steps in hopes that others may find it easier to follow their lead. Now, Keisha and Anna have become astronauts today thanks to Space for Humanity, whose mission is to expand access to space for, uh, for everyone. And to talk more about their mission and their purpose, we actually have a special guest in the studio, Space for Humanity's Executive Director, Rachel Lyons. Rachel. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me, Sarisha. It's such an honor to be here. Oh my gosh, you must just be absolutely pumped. So before we talk about Keisha and Anna, I know we all want to, I wanted to ask, could you tell us about Space for Humanity's mission? Absolutely, yeah, and I am so excited. The team is so excited. It's such a dream come true to see this happening, to see Keisha and Anna and John going to space. I'm, I'm like pinching myself here, watching this whole thing come to fruition. <laughs> And so Space for Humanity, we're a nonprofit organization founded by Dylan Taylor, who's a space investor and founder and CEO. And um, our mission, as you have been mentioning, is to sponsor people from all over the world to go to space. Yeah. When also, as you guys have both been mentioning, when people go to space and they look back down at our planet as this interconnected, fragile, beautiful, finite planet, it changes a person's perspective forever. Yeah. As you <laughs> spoke about so beautifully, yeah. yeah. And so we're really passionate about giving that perspective to as many people as possible yeah. by sending people who can be representatives for different areas and nations and places that haven't necessarily had exposure to this. Um, and then so they can come back down and, and be that for the people the people from their country, the people in their communities. Yeah, I mean, could you talk a little bit more about that? What impact do you see your citizen astronauts having, or what impact do you hope that they'll have upon return to Earth? Yeah, so we've sent two people to space so far. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're so grateful for this partnership with Virgin mm -hmm. Galactic to send Keisha to space, and then more soon that no announcements <laughs> yet, though. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of the 
the impact that we hope that they have, I would say that it's different depending on the person. And we can't predict what that is. Um, but what we're looking for is people who are committed to making a difference in their communities. People who have a track record of, of success. And people who have a track record of doing things that make a difference in the world. Yeah. Um, people who are natural leaders. And, and so the hope is, is that each of them come back down and make a difference in a way that's true for them. And, and like I said, we can't predict that. It's not prescriptive. And depending on the, the cares and the passions of the individual, it'll look different. Absolutely. And so that's the cool thing about Keisha and, and Anna going to space and just watching you know, the people that are impacted and, and the, their unique message mm -hmm. that Virgin Galactic has done such a beautiful job of capturing. Um, it's just amazing to watch. Yeah, I mean, actually, look, speaking of Keisha and Anna, yeah. you, I mean, you've seen their journey from when they were selected. You were there. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you could talk about, you know, being there, Keisha's reaction to her journey, training for spaceflight, being here on site, and then you saw her go to space. What impact have you already seen that journey make? Yeah, so, yeah, we were there just about two years ago, a little yeah. bit less than two years ago now. Um, myself, Richard Branson, some other Virgin Galactic team members and other people that were part of the campaign. And so I had the honor of going to Keisha's house and we knocked on her back door and we surprised her. And Richard Branson's face just, you know, greeting her when she opened the door. That's where we saw the screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's she was on person. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, that was, that was a dream come true because that was the first time we had ever given someone a, a ticket to space. And, and so to watch this now two years later, and also to watch the impact that she's having on Antigua. I mean, I've never been, I've been to a handful of space launches at this point, and I don't think I've ever met, even met someone from the Caribbean at one of these space launches. And so now there's reporters, there's people from Keisha's community, you know, there's people who are telling me what their flag means and what it means for them as a, as a nation to have Keisha be going to space, Keisha and Anna. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's incredible to watch and she is an inspiration. They are both inspirations for so many different demographics, so many different groups of people and they're, as I mentioned before, their messages are profound already and they haven't even seen the earth from space yet. Yeah, I mean, they represent such an incredible community. Of course, Antigua, Barbuda, Caribbean, mothers, <laughs> daughters, college, university students, women. It's the, the boundaries they're breaking is just absolutely mind blowing. And they're just the first, there's, there's gonna be many more. So exactly. I know you're eager to get back and cheer them on as they come into land, but anything you wanna say just to close out and you know, just tell us about your excitement for Akisha and Anna landing and being there to cheer them on. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess all I'll say is I've had the pleasure of spending some time with Keisha. After we surprised her, she and her husband gave me a tour of the island for a day afterwards. And for her, this is like the biggest dream of her life. And, and she gets to bring her daughter on that too. And so I think that's, that's what I will leave everyone with is just imagining what it would be like for someone who's dreamed of this forever to get to go and have this experience and be cheered on by her entire community. It's yeah, absolutely it's incredible. I know you're going to be right there when they get back to give them the biggest hug. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Can't wait. <laughs> Amazing. So speaking of cheer, uh, let's check back in in Antigua with Chewy. Trisha, I'm here with the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, and we just witnessed something absolutely amazing. Prime Minister, what does this mean for Antigua and Barbuda? Well, it's the most significant event uh, for the people of Antigua and Barbuda and the Caribbean. Uh, this is certainly a major achievement, and an achievement that will help to inspire great ambitions of the Antigua and Barbuda people. We're very proud of the courage and certainly the resilience of Keisha and, um, and her daughter. And uh, we are just very happy. Thank you. As you can see, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, 20 minutes right. possible. We're good. 20 seconds go fast. <laughs> All right, we got it. <laughs> 
Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. The energy in Tiga is inc just incredible. I can feel the energy here at Spaceport is absolutely amazing um, as we welcome our crew back as they come in for landing. Now, let's take it over. JR, can you to give us an update on their progress back to Earth? Yeah, I sure can. We're at this point just under 12,000 feet. Um, Kelly was at the controls there for most of the glide. CJ has just uh, resumed control. Of the uh, of the flying the spaceship, so the uh, approach checks are um, uh, in work. They've they've uh, planned and managed their energy management uh, as you know as you do with a glider, and now hitting those waypoints as they come in uh, to runway three four here at Spaceport America. So that's south to north uh, on the runway. For those non-pilots tuning in, those numbers represent the first two numbers on the magnetic heading of, the, of your compass. So 3-4 three, is 340 degrees. So we're doing a um, uh, turn to final right now, and that's a, uh, a left turn so that uh, CJ, the pilot, the commander in the ship, has a view of the runway. The landing gear is now down and locked. And we're about eight, uh, 7,500 feet. Amazing. Oops. Again, I've said this before many times, but the crew have this incredible view, not only of the New Mexican landscape, but of our spaceport facility, which is this incredible facility where they spent the last few days bonding with their crew and training with their crew. So, of course, yeah. holds a special part in their, in their hearts, and they get to see that view on their way down. So we're 1,000 feet above the runway. The runway here is about 4,500 feet or 500 feet. Pre-flare, that's pulling the nose up and uh, taking advantage of the ground effect. It's extra lift you get when you're close to the ground. We've crossed the threshold. That's the beginning of the runway. Beautiful. And touchdown of the main gear. Now CJ's going to hold the nose gear up for a little bit that helps bleed off the uh, energy that the, the spaceship has uh, using the air drag associated with that. Now I started to lower the nose. And the nose gear is now down. So at a designated airspeed, the pilots have the option to apply the brakes or not. They can let the, uh, let the vehicle uh, roll to a stop. We have plenty enough runway here. They are applying the brakes uh, today, so. Um, we have 12,000 feet of runway here 12, at Spaceport America. 12,000 feet of runway <laughs> and 200 feet wide, so plenty of room. <laughs> and full stop. Whoa, oh my gosh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> What a beautiful landing. Congratulations to everyone on board. We saw beautiful flying from our EVE crew and brilliant work by our chase pilot, all of whom are still in the air right now. Thank you to everyone on the ground here at Spaceport America who made this day possible. Continue following us on social to hear more about our incredible astronauts and see more from this incredible flight. Now, we'll continue the celebration here as we wait the arrival of our other vehicles. Our astronauts are envoys of hope curiosity and progress. The more who are able to have that experience and go back to their re respective diverse communities, the bigger effect it'll have on the next generation of dreamers for the care of our home planet and the people that inhabit it. G2 crew has demonstrated that the future of spaceflight is not only for pilots and engineers, but for artists, science, athletes, anyone that wants to embark on this journey. So wherever you are on planet Earth, we thank you for watching and we'd love for you to join us on one of our upcoming future missions. Please join us, join the celebration on social or head over to our website to learn more about this mission and how you can embark on your own journey to space. Thanks everyone, thank you for joining us. When I was two years old, just looking up in the skies, I was like, how can I get there? Being in the Caribbean, I didn't see how that was possible. So slowly I started letting that go. But the universe was really calling me.
I wanted to be an astrobiologist, and that seemed like it was impossible. But ideas are very powerful. I was in the Olympic Games in 1972. I've always enjoyed being an adventurer. I was flying with my daughter, and there was an ad that popped up. Would you like to become an astronaut? Would you like to go to space? And I said, yes. John is one of the most incredible people I've ever met. The fact that he's been following this company for 18 years, just for this moment, I think that's very special. For some reason, I seem to attract myself to these experiences. But when I got diagnosed with Parkinson's, I thought, well, that's it. They're not going to accept me. The fact that I am now going to space with Parkinson's is completely magical. Virgin Galactic is breaking down barriers for space travel and scientific research. From the regulatory side to the engineering side, it's amazing to see all of these pieces come together. The new space age means diversity, imagination, and adventure all will have a home in space. We've built a space line, and now it's time to go. This is revolutionary. My name is Anastasia Mears. My name is John Goodwin. Keisha Shaha. I'm the first person from Antigua to go to space. For me to go into space is hopefully inspirational to all people. It really does just connect everyone. This is for all of us. Space for all opportunity. We all need to get out of our comfort zone, try new things, to believe in ourselves. These are pre-space tiers. This is a standard issue tiers, totally required oh. to go into space.